Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today is a quick episode for you, just addressing a question that we see time and time again in tech support, namely, which plugin standard is the best? As you might know, Studio One is supporting multiple plugin standards, VST2, VST3, and if you're an Apple user, AU. And so you might wonder which plugin standard is actually the best in Studio One. Now, AU is probably the format I would recommend the least simply because that's Apple only, as I just mentioned. And if you ever consider to switch over to Windows, for example, then you're going to get all kinds of cross compatibility issues. You, some of your presets might not load properly that you saved via the Studio One browser because those can only be read by the AU instance of your plugin. It's a whole mess. And who knows if you're going to be an Apple user for the entirety of your life. Maybe Windows has some groundbreaking release at some point and then it would just be a little bit silly to be stuck on Apple just because you use the AU plugin standard. When it comes to VST2 versus VST3, that's also a pretty clear case. VST3 is just a much more modern standard, has actually been co-written by Studio One's founder Matthias Juvan, so you can assume that performance and stability are going to be exceptional for VST3, especially in Studio One. And it also comes with many benefits. For example, you have multi-output support that's adaptive. In VST2, you need like different plugin files for each of the output configurations. You might know that from native instrument contact where you get like an eight out, a 16 out and a stereo out plugin. None of that is necessary with VST3. It's just gonna be one VST3 instance. And also CPU usage is usually better. There's a wider variety of control. Automation is easier. There's just a lot of benefits that speak for VST3. But sometimes VST3 is just not an available format, especially in older plugins, and you might need to install VST2 anyway for backward compatibility. Now, that's no problem. In fact, it's no problem at all installing any of these plugin formats, but you should maybe set up Studio One's plugin manager in a way that you mostly prefer VST3's in your plugin selection going forward. Here's how you can do that. If you open up Studio One's browser by clicking on Browse, you're gonna see the Home tab right here. And if you're on the Home tab, then you should see the Plugin Manager button over here. If you can't see that, you can also go to the View menu up here. And from here, go to the Plugin Manager. That's the same thing. And here you can kind of manage the plugin visibility settings, the way the plugins that you have installed will be presented in Studio One's browser. Now, there's a really clever filter that you can use here. And what I like to do is just tick audio unit and VST2, untick VST3, and then just hide all, right? And then go to VST3, only tick VST3, and then click on show all. Now I'm only getting the choice of VST3 plugins inside of the Studio One browser, but the VST2 plugins are still accessible. So if I'm opening up older song projects that have used the VST2 versions instead, they're still gonna load without any problem because those plugin instances are still there. It's just that they're not being presented as the first choice inside of Studio One's own browser. Of course, if there's certain VST2 plugins that you just don't have as VST3, you can just show those exceptions here in the list as well. But this will just make it so that you're going to use VST3 more and more in your workflow, and eventually you're going to be able to phase out VST2 and AU all together. So, my recommendation is clear. I would always go for VST3 if that choice is available. And if it's not, then you can always use Studio One's plugin manager to get the most out of your current setup. Thank you for watching.